So thank you all so much for joining me today. I'm trying not to yell because there's people around. So <laughs> I was trying not to yell too much today, but I just wanted to say thank you. Um, so this is something different that I'm doing. Um, uh, you all probably know that I have a company called Conscious Creations where I make all sorts of body products, mind, body, and soul products, as I would call them. Um, and part of that, part of that is about wholeness and wellness. And so another part of that or aspect of that is certainly being out in nature and being able to get movement in the body because that's really important in terms of the balance you know, maintaining the balance in your body because your body wants to remain in balance. You, you want to be in a place of balance and homeostasis. And this helps um, specifically for my sisters, <laughs> let me just say, for my sisters, we just went through this Capricorn full moon and ooh chow. <laughs> but um, what, what it does is it helps to have your mental in a place of balance because if you can be in a place in nature specifically where you can come and realign your energy because the because earth as an element is a feminine element which is why we consider it to be mother earth right um, water is also a feminine element a feminine principle um, and so the moon as we know controls the tides the moon controls the water our bodies are made up of 70 percent water and so when the full moon um, during times of the full moon all of the emotions, all of the things that we have felt over the course of the, um, over all of the different cycles throughout that, you know, during that moon and before we get to the full moon, all of those different emotions or energy in motion swells to impregnate, you know, to impregnate the body with all of these emotions, all of these, everything that's happened within that period. Um, so that at the full moon you can release these energies and you can release anything that happens over that time that you don't want to carry into the next moon cycle. And so I wanted to make this video. This is we are the day after the full moon in Capricorn. Um, and and if, it, if any of you follow tarot, you know that the Capricorn, um, the Capricorn element or the Capricorn zodiac is rep represented by the um, the devil, <laughs> right? that's not to be a bad a bad thing right but it's, it's represented by the devil card in the tarot and sometimes and, and how i interpret that is things that keep us that can keep us bound to you know outdated patterns or outdating thought processes or outdated ways of being um that no longer serve us and where we're going in the next phase or the next cycle um and so i wanted to make this video to bring all of that full circle if you may but as well as to get moving so all of the all of the energies we're starting we're starting a new cycle we're starting in a place of wholeness and wellness and health and wealth and prosperity and all of these amazing things that people you know people want for um, as we're releasing on the full moon and building up to you know building up to the new moon right we want to be in flow with the things that we are wanting to manifest constantly, the, 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 the people that we are working to become, the women that we are working to become, the men that our brothers are working to become. As you are becoming, as you are in the state of becoming, right? We want to make sure that we are bringing forth the energy that we want to bring forth. And so I know a lot of us talk about health, we talk about wellness, we talk about movement, we talk about getting out and getting sun. We talk about things like grounding. And so let's do it, right? Let's move, let's ground, let's do it, let's bring it, let's bring it, right? Let's bring it. And so what I'm doing right now is just simply moving. However my body wants to flow is what I do. I'm simply moving with the energy that is within. And so what we have to do is make sure that we are in tune with our bodies. Sometimes we don't actually listen, listen to what our bodies are saying. Listen, listen to what our body wants. Listen. Your body speaks to you. Your body is you. <laughs> well, it's a part of you, if you may. You are the soul, the soul, the soul, the sun, the internal sun, the soul that lives within. 
within this vessel. And so we move. However the energy within you wants to flow. When I have problems with my hips, and I know that there's many of you guys out there that have problems with your hips, but anytime I have a stiffness or a stagnant energy in my hips, I like to move my hips to make sure that I'm moving my hips to release the stagnant energy. So if you're having issues with your hips, I know you guys probably can't see as I'm moving my hips, but I know that you can tell <laughs> by the upper body movement that I'm actually moving my hips, right? So I have to work on, I have to, I have to get a taller tripod is what it is. <laughs> and when I do that, you guys will get to see, you know, the actual movement of the hips. I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit. So let's do it. So we'll back up, back up. So the movement of the hips, right? And so sometimes we get a pocket. I know I do sometimes get a pocket of energy, like right here, right here, right? And so we want to move the hips. We want to move the hips, move the energy. And as you're moving, imagine the energy moving, moving moving out of the way, right? No stagnant energy here. We flow. As we know, stagnant waters bring gnats and all sorts of insects. And stagnant waters bring very unpleasant scents. <laughs> all right? So we want to make sure that everything is in flow, right? Because energy, energy never dies. It simply changes form. There's always movement. There's always movement. So we keep moving because we are energetic beings. So we keep moving. And make sure that whatever you do to one side, you do to the other to keep in balance. Your body wants to be in balance. So we move. Move. And sometimes we just do a little dance. Because we want to make sure that we work every single, every single muscle. We want to make sure that we work the legs. The nether world, if you will. The lower part of your body. This is the action. The action. This is the action that gets up and gets everything moving, right? So you want to make sure that you about that action, that you stay in action. One of the things that helps too is if you're feeling any sort of pain in your body to come out into the grass, to, to, to ground yourself in the energy of the earth, right? Ground yourself in the mother, in mother nature, ground yourself. And we do that by removing our shoes and placing the soles of our feet onto the ground, into the grass, onto the ground, so that we can absorb the negative ions that are a part of the earth in order to heal our vessel, right? So this is about self-healing, self-love loving yourself well loving yourself well and so we flow however this works for you right there's no specific movement that i you know tell people to do it's just whatever's going on with you however your energy is flowing whatever you are trying to bring forth right because for some it may be issues with your neck issues with your back, whatever the case may be, you want to move in accordance with that energy to make sure that you release whatever stagnant energy is in that particular part of your body, right? And so remember, the energy centers in your body are like wheels and like wheels, <laughs> right? They spin, they spin they spin 
And so we want to make sure that those wheels are spinning. Those wheels are called chakras. Starting from the base chakra, which is also called the root. It's that root chakra that's about stability. So imagine that like the roots of a tree, your family tree. And so as those roots grow firmly into the ground, as the seed is planted, the roots begin to form, the seed is planted. Imagine yourself as a seed. The roots are planted firmly in the soil, allowing your roots to spread out. Because as your roots spread, they connect to the other trees and they form a network, an underground network, right? Where they communicate unseen. No one knows that these trees are communicating through this underground network. But because as above, so below, it also corresponds with our neural network, our brain cells, right? And so we want to make sure that our foundation is stable, that our roots are firmly planted. And as that seed grows, it comes up into the sacral chakra. That is the reproductive seed. If I didn't state, the root chakra represents and corresponds with the color red. Passion. What else do you think of? You see that beautiful yellow butterfly just flew by? Because we're transforming. We're transforming the old ways of being into the new. We're bringing forth something new. We're bringing forth something new. And that newness is wellness. That newness is wellness. And that's what we bring forth. That's what we're transforming into. That's what we're becoming. Well beings who are firmly planted, deeply rooted. And as we go up to our sacral chakra, the color orange, the color orange, that's our place of reproduction, recreating itself reproduction and so we want to make sure that those hips are open are open to receive the seed to be planted firmly in that reproductive that seed of reproduction so whether that be a physical seed meaning a child whether that or whether that be an idea but it's all about creativity so if you feel your creativity being blocked if you're a writer, you're having writer's block, whatever, whatever your profession, whatever you may choose to do, if you are feeling blocked and stagnant in the area of creativity, you may need to open up your sacral chakra, the sacred space where your creativity lies. You may want to do some work and that's right above your root chakra. It is the place, it is the womb of creation. And as we travel up these energy centers, the wheels are spinning and they're rising up the spine. They're rising up the spine. And as they rise up the spine, they're intertwining. They're intertwining, right? <laughs> Doing the butterfly, right? That's what the butterfly told me, to do the butterfly, right? They're intertwining, the masculine and the feminine intertwining because we need both of these energies for power think of your body like a battery where you have the positive pole being the masculine and the negative pole being the feminine the giver and the receiver right but as this energy is climbing up the spine up the spine, imagine all of this energy, all of this energy, but the kundalini energy, understand, 
is considered to be up the spine is this energy, the serpent energy. So you move your body. What they say, move your body like a snake mark. You allow this energy to climb up your spine, right? To climb up your spine and into the solar plexus, into the space of the sun, the soul, the sun, represented by the color yellow. This is where your willpower is housed. Right? So if you are lacking willpower, if you are lacking the will to do anything, you may need to look at what's happening with your solar plexus, your gut. Do you trust your gut? Do you trust your instincts? Right? Do your instinct. <laughs> do you need to cleanse your colon? Right? What, what do you need to do to get yourself back in balance, to get yourself back to where your body wants to be? Stay with me. Stay with me. So as we're spinning and we're climbing, we're spinning and we're climbing, we're spinning and we're climbing, right? We're climbing. And as we continue to climb, our willpower, we got our willpower in check. We are climbing to the heart, represented by the color green. So with any of these chakras, if you are feeling any kind of blockages in the chakras, you want to eat food that corresponds with these particular colors. So once again, the base chakra is red, root. So you want to eat root vegetables, like yams, which also help with the sacral chakra because they're orange, but because they're a root vegetable, they also help with um, the root chakra. Beets, because it's about the blood, the blood, the blood. That you can also use, um, a crystal called hematite actually i'm wearing a hematite bracelet available on my website at www.consciouscreations.live not in the bracelet form but in the crystal form so if you if you need to balance the root eat red root vegetables if you need to balance the sacral chakra the color orange you want to eat oranges now oranges are acidic so you may want to balance that out right um, but the color oranges orange peppers, anything else that you can think of is orange, like I said, sweet, uh, sweet potatoes, yams, things like that. Those will help when it comes to nourishment. You want to make sure that your body has the nourishment, the energy that it needs to function the way that it needs to in maximum wellness. So with yellow, you may want to add lemon to your water. I know a lot of people in the rising, they add lemon to their water because it's a live electric, electric food. So you want to give your body life. Life, 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 life. <laughs> Butterflies are back. Giving life. So we were at the heart. The drum, the beating of the drum. We were at the heart. So as everything has risen, it comes to the heart. And before you can speak anything out of your mouth, it's in your heart. There's a scripture that says, from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what are you speaking from your mouth? What is in your heart? So if you want to make sure that what is in your heart matches with what is in, what is in your crown, right? What is coming from the heavens above to the earth below, before it gets there, it comes out of your throat, out of your throat chakra, which we'll get to. But it starts between the heart, which is the, like the midpoint, if you may, because without the heart, nothing else matters, right? Your consciousness, your consciousness. So we want to eat green which help the heart to beat, right? So if you look at any, any leaf, let me show you guys a leaf. This was in a little bit dried up, but this was a leaf that greeted me on my path the other day. As you can see, it's shaped in a heart. But as you can also see, with the leaves, they have little veins, right? The same way 
that your heart has veins. So, when it comes to your heart chakra, you want to make sure that you're eating green leafy vegetables that help with the veins. They help your blood flow. So as we talk about the root chakra and the color red and eating root that corresponds with the blood, that you also want to think about the heart because those things work in tandem, right? They work in tandem. So you want to make sure that you're eating green leafy vegetables because you can see the veins. You can see that they will work through your veins. And as you eat them, imagine your veins receiving everything they need to flow, everything they need to flow from your heart to your feet, to the soles of your feet, through your cardiovascular system, through the circuits. They're called the circuit. Once it's complete, the red blood cells and the, I'm sorry, the red blood and the, the oxygenated, I should say, and the deoxygenated blood working together, working together. They complete what's called a circuit. They complete a circuit as a part of your cardiovascular system, cardio, movement, cardio, heart, right? You want to keep your blood flowing, keep your heart pumping, move your heart, move your heart, right? Stick your chest out. Stick your chest out, poke it towards the sun, right? Say, poke it out. <laughs> I know we'll have no music, but I'm here to give y'all game, jewels, if you may, jewels, to help you. This jewels, J-O-U-L-E-S, and jewels, right? But jewels of energy, these jewels of energy to keep your body flowing, to keep your body movement, moving. So, we're at the heart, our wheels are spinning. Our wheels are spinning. The kundalini is rising to our throat chakra, which corresponds to the color blue, communication. So, when we wanna speak truth to power, we wanna make sure that everything else is in alignment so that we are speaking truth. We're not speaking from a place of distortion because we're, nothing is, not everything is in alignment. And so we're speaking from a place of truth. Okay. So, if you want to balance or need to balance your throat chakra, make sure that you are doing things like drinking mint tea, right? That helps um, if you are, because it has a cooling effect, because the color blue is cooling, right? It's cool. Red is passionate. It's fire. But blue is cooling. Think about the, think about the ocean. So you want to make sure also that you're drinking lots of and lots of good natural spring water that has still the, the ions and the minerals and everything that it had from flowing over the rocks, collecting the minerals so that you can have the minerals that you need to keep your body flowing the way that it needs to, okay? So, eat your blueberries. Here you can eat your blackberries. I think just the color blue, cooling. You're cooling, you're making sure that the body has the hot and the cold right because at different seasons different times your body needs different things but if you always have what you need you're never lacking anything right so you always want to give your body everything that it needs so that you're never lacking you're never lacking you're never lacking there is no lack right there is no lack so keep going we're speaking truth to power we're speaking truth to power from an overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. We're speaking truth to power. Speaking truth to power. And we're still moving. We're still grounding our energy. We're still grounding, still moving. And so, we get to the third eye chakra. Corresponding with the color indigo. The color indigo. Which is a deeper, deeper blue right a deeper blue more of a violet if you may so we have indigo and this is our first eye third eye whatever pineal gland but either way it allows you to see clearly it helps you to see clearly it allows you to see clearly 
Because the two eyes, you only see what's physical. But with the third eye, it opens up a new realm of possibilities because it is at the center. It is at the center. So we breathe. And here we close our eyes so that we see, truly see, intimate, intimately, into me, I see. Look within and see where everything is. See the energy. See the energy within. Ask yourself how you're feeling. How are you feeling at this point with what you're seeing internally? Does anything feel out of alignment, out of balance? If so, speak to yourself and ask your higher self, ask the universe, ask your God or goddess what you need to do to bring yourself into alignment, what is causing this misalignment. So that you can see clearly, see beyond the physical realm into the spirit. And as we continue the wheels spinning the wheels keep spinning the wheels keep spinning up into the crown chakra put on your crown adjust your crown adjust your crown right adjust your crown adjust your crown keep your head to the sky the crown chakra corresponds with the color purple one of our favorite movies <laughs> the color purple royalty you are divine royalty you are divine royalty and as you adjust your crown imagine yourself bringing together the red of the root chakra and all of the colors all of the chakras together to create a perfect harmony from above from below to above and as above so below and when your crown chakra this is the place of divine consciousness where you are able to receive messages from your cosmic ancestors your cosmic lineage from the heavens and to your crown as you process the information from your crown, it's important that you are mentally stable. Hear me, hear me. I know a lot of people out there deal with what they call mental illness. Now I can go on and on about different causes for some of these things, but one of the things that happens is it manifests, as we know, as instability. And so this is why it's important that your chakras are in alignment and that you are in alignment with your true self. Because sometimes we feel out of balance and we are out of balance because we are living truly out of alignment with our natural selves, out of alignment with who we really are. And one of the ways that we can do this as, as beings of the sun is by getting out into the sun. We can do this by earthing ourselves into the, into the earth elements, right? Into the grass, into nature. Truly enjoying, enjoying nature, enjoying these things, because these are some of the things that can help us to be in balance. Many people are mentally imbalanced because they're not connected with, with the very earth upon which they live. They're not connected to the water that they drink. They're not connected to any of these elements that are within them. And so they're truly disconnected from themselves. And so the purpose of this video is to remind you of who you are and to help you to bring yourself back into balance with your truth, with who you are authentically. Now, if you resonate with this, then you resonate with this. If you don't, you don't, and that's okay. But this is for beings that resonate with this information. And if you do know that 
it's important to keep yourself in a state of mental balance. And one of the things I always share with people is feed your brain. So you want to give your give your brain food. Give your give yourself brain food. One of the ways that you can do this is walnuts and pecans. And I, t I tell people things like simple things like that because that is it is what it is. It's a seed. <laughs> Truly, it is a seed that is planted in your body and you give yourself good water to feed that seed. And they're, they, pecans and walnuts are shaped like little brains. So they do what they do. They, they are what they are, what it look like, right? What it look like, what it do. That's what it do, right? It helps your brain. It truly helps your brain. So when you want to refocus, make sure you, and, and I, I prefer to eat the ones that are whole as opposed to the ones that are broken or crooked, you know, cracked and all that kind of stuff because for me I, I i just that's just that's just the me thing i choose to eat the ones that are whole because i want my brain to operate from a place of wholeness and so when i'm consuming that it's a reminder to myself of what i'm doing to myself what i'm feeding to myself i'm feeding myself wholeness and well-being and so um there are also uh different mushrooms that can also help with brain as your as brain food so I always tell people lion's mane. Um, lion's mane is funny because uh, the lion's mane mushroom, actually it's a white mushroom and it looks like a little afro, <laughs> um, but it, it, it is said to represent a lion's mane. So we talk about being lions and kings of the jungle and all these kinds of things, but think about what it is. So it helps, not only it, it helps, it helps to feed your brain. Lion's mane is also very good for the nerves. That's another thing that's important to feed as we talk about looking at the, the leaves and looking at the, the veins and the leaves, you wanna feed the nerves because your body, think about your body like a tree, right? These are the trunks of your tree, the trunks of your tree. And as you plant these, you want to make sure you're firmly rooted. And so in doing that, you want to also make sure that the, the nerves that flow through your body, that connect through your body, through this vessel, that those nerves are functioning well. And that will help you with dealing with issues like anxiety and depression and all sorts of all sorts of uh, illnesses or diseases that manifest as mental instability. And it's because there's something that is missing in a, from a, from and on different levels, right? There's something that is missing. But if you start with feeding the brain and feeding the nerves, that helps to reduce the onset of these sorts of issues. And if you're dealing with these sorts of issues, I always remind people, I'm, you know, consult your doctor. However, these are some natural things that even the doctors know about that are going to help you. So you want to introduce these things into your diet, um, but if you're still having these issues, increase these things within your diet. Um, also, feed your gut, balance your gut. So as we talk about the, the we talked about the solar plexus chakra, talked about the gut making sure that your gut is balanced so every day I take a probiotic but there's also natural probiotics that you can do so things that are um, well you can do lemon of course um, also the Sun you know taking in the Sun but you want to also introduce things into your gut that are going to help to balance your gut so that your gut is not so acidic one of the things that I've had to do is I've reduced my intake of specifically caffeinated coffee. I, if anybody who knows me knows I love my coffee, but I've had to decrease my intake of caffeinated coffee because I was starting to see that it was having an effect on my solar plexus and on my gut. Um, so one of the things that I always recommend to folks when it comes to the gut is dandelion because dandelion, we got some lions, I'm telling you. <laughs> Shout out to all my Leos out there. So um, dandelion, dandelion is very, 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 very good for your liver. And so that's going to help. That also corresponds with the solar plexus chakra. So you want to make sure that you're feeding the liver because the liver and the kidneys are the, the, the what do you call them? The filtration systems of the body. So they help, those are the organs that things, that are uh, the toxins that flow through your body. Um, they flow through the liver and the kidneys. And so when your body has a, a buildup of different sorts of toxins, they flow through your liver and your kidneys. And when, when there is such a buildup, they can impact these organs. So you wanna reduce the amount of toxins that you are receiving. And so one of the ways that we talked about this is grounding and releasing those, um, 
releasing the energy into the earth and receiving the ions from the earth in order to replenish your vessel. So um, keep, keep your mind right. I got some tea on my website called Get Your Mind Right. I'm actually drinking that today because um, I, had, I had a bit of a headache today. Um, so get you some Get Your Mind Right tea. It's made with lemon balm, um, which helps with good for anxiety. Um, it's also good for headaches, of course, because it helps with inflammation. Um, and, it's, and it has uh, peppermint in it. So it's peppermint, lemon balm, and um, dehydrated lemons that I dehydrate to put inside the tea. So um, I hope that this is helpful to you guys. I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you for your time. And I send you wholeness. And in the meantime, love yourself well. You deserve it.